Hello, and welcome back to Polytoots. Uh, I did remember that I forgot to do the second part of my shader tutorial. So if you remember from the uh, first one, which was, you know, pretty sort of realistic and using normal map stuff, I did say that I would uh, also be showing how to do, you know, a more sort of stylized Toonie version, which is um, it's a lot less c complicated. So this should be a pr pretty quick video. Uh, and you have, you know, your sort of standard controls. You can change the initial sort of tiling of the texture. Uh, this texture, by the way, I have just grabbed it from the internet real quick. I tried to find out uh, who had made it, but it, it just, like, I found it from some p Pinterest board, and I just I just could not find the original author, so sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, it uses whatever albedo you want to plug into it, and of course, obviously, if you want to do normals or AO or, or, or whatever, I have... A, other videos that kind of talk about how to implement that. Uh, but for the actual raindrops, the magic kind of happens through just this texture or something a lot like it, which, you know, it's very easy to create in Photoshop. It's just, you know, some spheres basically with some uh, fade outs. Um, and that's essentially what's sort of doing all of the rain. And then we try to sort of randomize it in a similar way to, the, to how we did the original rain. Um, but yeah, so it's all, it should, if you've followed the first one, this should be pretty uh, familiar. And then obviously you have controls to sort of increase or decrease the tiling. Um, you have the speed, so you can make them crazy fast or stupid slow. That's too slow. Um, yeah, and then obviously the actual strength of them, which kind of just defines how soft or whatnot. It's basically the sort of opacity of the effect itself. So that's up to you. Uh, and obviously we could also Probably, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I think we should be able to change the color. Um, we'll see. And then, of course, just metal and spec, but, you know, standard stuff. So, yeah, we're, we're going to be making this now. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, so let's just hop right into it. So let's just get, uh, say, a new material. Stick that on there. So now we're going to get ourselves uh, Amplify Shader, Surface... And this has made a new one here, which we're going to rename immediately before I forget what it is. Uh, so poly to tune rain. Okay, cool. Uh, and then up here, again, Polytoots. I think I already have one with the same name, so I'll just do tutorial tune rain. And let's apply that. Uh, let's just close this for now, just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, so we'll select either the mesh or we can select the material that we just made. Either way, it's this material over here. So we'll just change this to uh, Polytoots. Oh my god, I have, this is a mess. Tutorial, Tune This is, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to tidy this up afterwards. But So Tune Rain. So at the moment it's black because there's nothing on it. So let's go ahead and actually start making the shader. So we'll just select this, hit return, and we'll open up this. And I will dock it, but I'll try to give myself a little bit more room. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to put down is just a texture node. And uh, we'll call this, let's say, um, Ripley texture. Uh, so this, I could either just put this straight into here now and assign our magical ripple texture. As you can see, nothing is happening. Pretty standard. Uh, and so what we kind of want to do is we're going to be using like a, a noise with UV coordinates to kind of go through this and alter it uh, in some animated way, along with the panner, of course, that's how the whole thing would be animated. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is get in some texture coordinates and we probably want to also put down a float so that we can control the tiling of this um, afterwards. So we'll say ripple tiling, make it a property, uh, put that into tiling and that into UVs. And so now we have this, which uh, you probably want the default value. This always catches me out. Default value should be set to at least one. Uh, for the tiling, so that over here is actually one. Uh, so yeah, pretty simple now. We can control the tile. Great. Um, and so now let's actually move on to the to the uh, like the weird effect itself. 
and let's just create a panel node. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to add this with another UV coordinate. And I'll try to remember where I kind of learned this from. I remember it was some, uh, it was a sh shader tutorial for Unreal, but I just, I mean, it's been so long that I just, I can't remember. I'll try to tr track it down. And if I manage to find it, I'll, I'll leave it in the comments. But yeah, I mean, that's another thing kind of worth mentioning. If, uh, if you are sort of looking to make your own sh shaders, you don't necessarily have to be seeking out tutorials from, you know, the specific shader tool that you're using. Like, you, you know, you can convert things even from Unreal. And when I say convert, I don't mean like automatically convert. I mean, if you understand what it is they're doing and they're talking about their nodes, you can easily manually translate that into whatever shader tool you're using. Um, so yeah, it's worth keeping in mind, unless of course you're using Unity's new sh shader graph, in which case uh, there's still a lot of stuff missing from that. But uh, anyway, so what are we doing? Um, I was rambling on, I've done this completely wrong, so sorry about that. We will disconnect those, we don't want to do that. So we have our uh, um, texture coordinates, and what we'll actually do is we will add these two together. We don't want to do what I did before. So we'll add these and let's get some uh, some motion going. So get a float property, and this will be like the speed. So we'll call it ripples speed, and default value of I'm not even sure one. I guess should be fine. And let's throw that into speed. Uh, okay, so that should be cool. And since oh, sorry, since we already have uh, UVs and the tiling happening over here. We might as well actually just plug them into uh, up here as well into our panel. So it's going to be using the same texture coordinates that we have here rather than, you know, making up our own. And we'll use the red channel only because this is a, a black and white texture and there's no point in using RGB. So we'll do something like this and I'll hit the P key so we can start to see previews because in a second we're going to start to see some things happen. Let's disconnect that. So let's get a noise generator. This is this is kind of where the magic begins to happen. So, okay, we can see that we have some movement, uh, which is good, always good. And uh, we probably do want to increase the tiling of that. Ah, we'll play with that later, could be good. So from here, we kind of want to multiply uh, this kind of noise that's moving around with this t texture sheet and it, it creates this kind of uh, this odd effect where uh, it it does look a lot like these sort of rings that are expanding sometimes you can you can sort of see that that's not the case uh, but if it's coming down fast enough and they're small enough then I think uh, as far as sort of toony rain goes it's uh, it's a pretty good effect it's very cheap it's a lot cheaper than using let's say p particle systems or anything like that um, but we're gonna need to do some stuff to it. Like if we were to just multiply this now with that and hook this straight into, let's say the albedo, we're going to get something kind of wrong. So we get this, which is, it's, it's cool, but it's, it's, it's also just not right. Um, and so the way that we kind of want to fix this is we need only like these white bits and everything else is kind of uh, like we we don't need basically because at the moment if we were to try and sort of uh, add this on top of a texture uh, it's gonna like change the color of that texture because this isn't you know the blacks aren't completely black and it's also kind of you know it's it's weird basically trust me um, so the first thing that we can kind of do to tidy this up a bit is to add in a step which will basically just uh, max out some values and we don't know what range we want yet so we'll kind of just play with this uh, yeah I was expecting to see something here maybe I'm doing something wrong let's see if we just well okay let's uh 
Interesting. I think, uh, you know where it is, we might need to do a 1 minus, because we could be looking at the opposite. So let's just 1 minus that, and throw this in there. Okay, yeah, so what this is, what's happening now, is we're basically using this, uh, these sort of white spheres, uh, spheres? I mean, I guess they're circles, uh, as a mask, uh, which is masking through this noise. So wherever this white circle is, is where that noise kind of comes through. And it creates this, uh, I would say, a pretty sort of convincing toony rain effect. Uh, as I was saying before, there are some instances where it kind of breaks down. I'll try to see if we can see any. Most of them are pretty good, actually. Oh well. Um, so yeah, we can kind of we can play with this a bit more, trying to sort of uh, increase uh, the power of it. But for now, um, let's get ourselves a get. Uh, not a get. Well, we do eventually want to get, but we also want a register local var. Put that into there, and we'll just call this um, I don't know, ripples, I suppose. And then for our get, we'll call it ripples, and. We'll move this down here and we'll start working a bit on the uh, albedo. So this is going to be pretty sort of quick and easy. So we just have a texture sample, uh, albedo. Um, yeah, if you haven't watched any of my other tutorials or any other Amplify sh shader tutorial, the way that I'm able to put these nodes down like that is uh, a lot of them, like if, if you hit the space bar, um, and let's just find Let's see texture. If you see it with a bracket like this and the T, that means it has a hotkey. So the t texture sample, uh, which is one of the most common, basically the most common ones tend to have hotkeys. So you can hold the T key and click, and that, that will do that. So yeah, just mentioning that just in case you're completely new and you have no idea what's going on. But anyway, we'll put this our ripples into the UVs of. Um, wait, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. That's the wrong way. This is going to go further up. We want uh, a different float in here, and we'll call this one albedo uh, tiling. I would just call it tiling. That'll be easier. Tiling. Make sure our default value is at least one, and we'll put that in there. So let's get a another register, and we'll call this one just I guess albedo that into there for now. We will eventually introduce the uh, the rain. And obviously I've made a bit of a mistake here. We do want to feed this through uh, some t texture coordinates before we actually put it straight into the UV of the albedo. So if I just do that. So now that's at least showing up. So let's see if we were to put this back into emission again. In theory this should work uh, yeah, I mean, it does and it does not, so needs a little bit of tweaking, but uh, either way, for this effect, we're going to be doing it all through the albedo, but we're going to be adding them in sort of after the fact, so let's just continue with the, with the ripple for now, so let's get this ripples, and we'll put that into the albedo. We could just stick it straight into debug or emission for sort of easy easy testing but yeah it's all the same so okay let's carry on let's carry on so we know that we've got some sort of black areas that we kind of need to just get rid of and what i'm going to do is basically try to just um increase the strength first and then we're going to sort of clamp the values in fact clamping if we were to clamp now, this should maybe, in theory, fix uh, some initial issues. Okay, yeah, so my theory was at least correct, which is good. So now we're only seeing the white. So you could now, if you wanted albedo in emission, you could do it like that, uh, which is completely fine. Um, I prefer to kind of have it with the albedo so that I can use my emission easily for something else. I mean, you still can have it this way and just add in um, another t texture to kind of multiply over. 
um, or rather not even multiply either way I'm just I'm, I'm sure I'm confusing somebody because I'm almost confusing myself but basically we're not going to be using emission uh, we're only going to be using albedo so that if you wanted to easily use these other channels for anything else then you can um, so yeah we're going to now add this so we have this uh, ripples and we're going to just uh, very sort of easily easily simply just literally even add it so we're just going to add this onto that and put that into there and there we go it's basically the same result as having it in emission um, aside from the fact that it's not emissive if you know what i mean so now the only thing left to do is control the like the strength of these things and uh, actually just before we do that we'll introduce uh, some tints so let's just get our color so five key do that and we'll just call it tint get a property capital t at the beginning because that's important for some reason and uh, we just multiply these two together and then throw that in there so now oh, it's black because our tint is black uh, let's make this a default of white it won't change this at least i don't think it will unless we change the name but it, it, it won't change the material yet but before i hit that old commit or set an active material i don't know what they call that button it's the uh the go button so we'll put the tint there and then we'll press the go button and then we can change this i just prefer to have my tints on top i guess it's because how unity standard materials do it so yeah anyway now you can change the color of that uh so let's just grab all of this c and we'll say albedo and then this we still need to do the strength uh, so we will uh in fact maybe yeah probably best to do it before the clamp because we'll let the clamp kind of just finish everything off all nice and tidy uh, so this should just be a simple case of from this point after everything's done and the clamp is where it kind of gets fixed and the values get basically uh well clamped between zero and one uh so yeah in between here this is the best place to kind of control its strength and the classic way to control something's strength is just multiplying it by a value so let's multiply this by that make this a property we'll call it uh ripple strength uh give it a default value of one in fact also let's turn this into a slider because you would never want to go below zero or above one so zero to one with default value of one and then multiply hooks into that and that's pretty much the whole thing done so we'll just call this uh ripples and there's the albedo so yeah pretty simple so we'll apply that so now we can control strength uh, the tiling amount of the ripples which is you know independent of the texture itself which uh, can be quite handy and then obviously the speed so you can make it do whatever it is you want to do uh, obviously these planks are pretty huge yeah so that is pretty much it for the tutorial although i did say at the beginning that we'd look into changing the color and uh, theoretically i think all we'd have to do is I could just give myself a little bit more room um, just multiply this by a color so give myself a little bit more room so let's get another color down uh, multiply should be this simple although this is usually always how I find out things are not as simple as they should be or rather that they are so yeah so that uh, default value um, probably want it to be a white uh, let's go full alpha because we don't want to alpha this out uh, not that i think i mean it might have an effect it might not either way we'll we'll basically go full white full alpha and apply that uh, although it would help if it was a property and we'll just call it ripple color with a u and now in theory unless i'm wrong okay yeah so you can change the color so can have whatever color raindrops you want 
So yeah, that is the end of this tutorial. I'm sorry that it took me... I mean, I don't even know when I uploaded the other one. Maybe like a month ago or something, but... Yeah, there we are. It's uh, finished now. Um, I rushed through it quite a bit, which I do apologize for those little mistakes. Hopefully it kind of makes sense. I mean, if you want, I'll just give you like a, a slow scroll through all of the nodes now. So if you come back to this video to rebuild it, you know to just come to this point and just have a look at this last sort of 10 seconds or so, because that's basically the entire setup. Uh, obviously I haven't done the metalness or the spec that was in the original one, but you know, if you can build all of this, then you can probably just put a float value into smoothness and metallic. So yeah, so there we are. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. Uh, I've had a couple of sort of interesting suggestions. Uh, a lot of them seem to be pretty out of my league, but I will give them a crack. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything that you kind of want to know how to do uh, in regards to sh shaders or just game art in general, like with uh, modeling, texturing, animation, rigging, skinning, UVing, whatever, just uh, let me know. I am the master of all of that. I say the master, uh, jack of all trades, master of none, probably fits a bit better. Uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one.